America, the off-road kingdom belongs to Jeep, and it's been that way for years. But now, with hiking and camping becoming a little more trendy and hashtag van life perpetually trending, we're starting to see a few key players creep towards Jeep's throne. Ford has revived the Bronco, GMC is bringing back Hummer as an electric super truck, and coming across the Atlantic, there's this, the 2020 Land Rover Defender. We haven't seen a Defender sold new in the United States since 1997, because the original model didn't have airbags, and that became a bit of a problem for us. Luckily, this one does have airbags, and it has 10,000 other little features and options and bits of tech that we are going to get into shortly. But while I have your attention, <clears throat> while I have your attention, be sure to subscribe to the Car Gurus YouTube channel. Okay, back to the Defender. If you got into an accident in the old Defender, you were in trouble. Remember, no airbags. But for what it's worth, the other guy was in trouble too. Those machines were metal boxes on wheels with sharp corners all around. The new design is much more modern, it still looks chunky and blocky and geometric, but the edges have all been softened. Now up here we've got a cheese grater on the front fender, big wheels, 20 inches on an off-road vehicle, and finally, plastic cladding on a car that deserves plastic cladding. The Defender is arguably most distinctive from behind. Land Rover has retained the sharp edges on the rear corners, and the taillights are like nothing else on the road. Stacked, rounded squares flanked by more stacked, rounded squares. The tailgate opens like this, and it's got these rounded edges here, plenty of metal and glass on the side. It kind of looks and feels like you're opening the hatch to a ship rather than the back door of your car. And with the spare tire mounted on the back, it's heavy too. Now head up the side and things stay pretty unique. You can buy a Defender in black or gray or silver, or all sorts of colors, but you should buy it in this color, Pangea Green. There's this body color patch smack in the middle of the C-pillar. You can get a lockable box mounted here. We can get that. Now you'd think that this would cause a huge blind spot for the driver, but it doesn't really. And we'll get more into that once we climb inside. The iconic Alpine lights are here, and up front, the Defender's face is highlighted by LED headlights and these semicircle running lights. There are these step plates on the hood, but don't step on them. They're not functional. Honestly, the whole car has a little bit of that built by Legos vibe, at least for me, and when it first arrived, I didn't love it. But after a week of driving it, now I do. Surprise! Tough motif continues in here too. Exposed screw heads are a little cheeky, but I love this powder coated metal and the green leather lining these edges looks and feels like it was designed to get dirty out in the country. Over my head is a big panoramic sunroof, an option for $1,750. Under my feet are some chunky floor mats and under my butt is a driver's seat with possibly my favorite upholstery ever. Great feeling leather inserts surrounded by coarse, tough fabric. They're the automotive equivalent of a barber coat. I mean, frankly, this whole car is the automotive equivalent of a barber coat. There are little shelves and cubbies all over the place, to the left of the wheel, behind and below the touchscreen, and ahead of the front passenger. We found that this one is just about the right size for a dozen eggs. Moving on, you can order a Defender with the center console deleted and in its place a jump seat for three across seating up front. Land Rover says that that jump seat is sized to fit a fully grown adult, but I have a little trouble believing it. I mean, last winter I sat three across in the front of a Ford F-150 and that was pretty tight. So if it were up to me, I would forego that jump seat and keep the center console. After all, you can get it with a refrigerator. Fridge aside, this interior doesn't match our test car's price tag of nearly $75,000. It's nice, but so is a Wrangler Sahara or a Lexus GX. I can't think of another car that looks or feels quite like this one, especially on the interior. But just because the interior is unique does not necessarily make it luxurious. 
Now we're gonna move kind of quickly through the tech section here because I've barely hit the gas pedal and I wanna start driving. Business as usual, Land Rover's display looks really slick. And I'm happy to report we haven't encountered any bugs or malfunctions while using it, and that, unfortunately, is not really business as usual. Outside of these off-road oriented controls, there aren't really any hard buttons. The touch screen is a little hard to navigate, and while the graphics are sharp, the thin font and bright white background is a little tricky to see. Luckily, you can switch to a darker background. It's also not canted towards the driver at all. It's very flat and even between the front seats. And that means that it's quite a far reach to this far edge. You'll want to use the volume control on the steering wheel rather than stretching to turn this knob. Land Rover gives you huge amounts of customization options, particularly on the driver information display. You can do one gauge, two gauges, or you can opt for a full screen map like Audi's virtual cockpit. It all looks really, really cool. Sirius XM and HD radio are also on board as is a 400 watt Meridian sound system. Don't get me wrong, it sounds good, but you're also not going to confuse it for the incredible 29 speaker Meridian system you can get in a top tier Range Rover. Okay, time to go. First things first, Land Rover's Terrain Response 2 off-road system basically makes it so you can aim the Defender at an obstacle, gently feather the throttle, lightly maneuver the wheel, and the obstacle is now in your rear view mirror. Wheeling this car on a trail really is that easy. If you let it, the computer will do 99% of the work for you. It can ride angles up to 45 degrees, and it can wade in up to nearly three feet of water. When you need a little extra visibility, Land Rover offers a set of cameras, including a 360 degree view that shows the Defender amid its surroundings. We still recommend you use a spotter in those situations, but this is pretty good. Now, our test car has Land Rover's absolutely incredible twin turbocharged three liter straight six engine. 395 horsepower and 406 pound-feet of torque run through an eight-speed automatic transmission is more than you need. This car can seriously haul the mail, and that can be a little bit tricky if you're trying to go easy on the throttle. That was a problem for me this week. Land Rover says I should be getting 17 miles per gallon in the city and 22 on the highway. And while I think I did pretty well in highway driving, I did not get 17 in the city. The powertrain is a mild hybrid setup with a 48 volt battery helping power many of the car's systems. One of the turbos is also run by an electric motor, which effectively eliminates turbo lag. Before you even get off-road, and by the way, we are back on the road now, this is a really, really good engine. It comes standard on the SE trim, which we're driving, and all trims above that one. If you get a base spec, Land Rover Defender or the Land Rover Defender S, you get a two liter four cylinder engine, but it's not the mild hybrid. So while that engine will save you money up front, you're not gonna save any money on gas. This car weighs 5,000 pounds, which in technical parlance is what we call a real hefty boy. In town and through tighter bends on the highway, you'll feel that weight moving around. What you won't feel are any potholes, speed bumps, frost heaves, traffic cones, or anything else you should or should not be driving over. The suspension in the Defender just soaks it all up. All right, what's left? Blind spot monitoring is standard, but a lot of other features are just optional. We've got a rear view camera mirror up here and lane keeping assist and cruise control with a speed limiter on the steering wheel. In the back seat, there is plenty and I mean plenty of space. Now, remember the body colored patch on the outside at the C pillar? Well, it doesn't impact the driver's blind spot that much, but it does result in this weird split window situation in the back. This rolls down, but this one doesn't. Our test car also has the Defender's optional third row of seats. They're two basically jump seats. They're folded into the trunk and the floor, and we're not even gonna try and show you what it looks like when I squeeze in the back. They're for children only. Behind the second row, you get 34 cubic feet of cargo space, and this car has 69 cubic feet with both rows folded. 
If you ditch the third row option, that total number grows to 79 cubic feet. The first night I had this car, I folded down this seat and stuffed two bicycles in the back. There's plenty of space. The question with the Defender is whether it remains a compelling choice in a segment that now houses the Jeep Wrangler, the Toyota 4Runner, and of course, the new Ford Bronco. Well, I'm certain of two things. First, the 2020 Defender sales, the predicted sales, those took a dip after Ford unveiled the Bronco. And the second thing I'm certain of is that none of those competitors say Land Rover on the back. Because at the end of the day, all these cars are capable off-roaders, but this one is a genuine off-roader made by a genuine luxury brand. $75,000 is a tough pill to swallow, and honestly, the Defender's interior doesn't match that price tag. But its sound dampening and its ride quality do fit the bill. And the Defender, the truth is, it competes best when it's optioned like this one. Sure, you can get a Defender 110 for as low as $49,900. Or you can wait till next year when you should be able to buy a Defender 90, the two door, for as low as $46,100, eventually. But one look at the base specs steel wheels and you may start to wonder why you didn't just go for a Bronco. What makes the Defender special is how it can tackle the terrain while still coddling the driver and in an increasingly competitive field, when it comes to true luxury off-roading, Land Rover stands alone. Thanks for watching. For more videos, subscribe to the Car Gurus YouTube channel. And tell us what you think about the Defender in the comments section below. Is this the best option for off-roaders looking to buy something that's not a Jeep? To read Cliff Atiyah's full written review of the 2020 Land Rover Defender, head to cargurus.com. Thanks again, we'll see you next time.